Welcome back to our video module on dynamics. Today I'd like to look at a couple example problems that have a force varying in some capacity. I want to imagine our same card as before, still going with some velo velocity to the right, initial velocity, and then encountering some force. However, the force that we're going to have is some sort of fluid, some sort of fluid that fights motion. So the force in this case is going to be some constant times the velocity. This is known as viscous drag. And I want to know how the cart's position varies with time. So today we're going to look back at the steps we learned in our last video module. We're going to use them and find position as a function of time for viscous drag. Let's get started. Well, our free body diagram is exactly the same. So let's try and solve this with the tools we have. If you can, go ahead and put the video on pause and see if you can set up the differential equation. I'll be back in a couple seconds and we'll see how we did. Well, hopefully you came up with this equation right here, negative CV equals m dv dt. Our next step is going to be to isolate the variables. So go ahead and put the video on pause and when we come back I'll have that step written down for us. Well, hopefully you came up with this simple equation right here. Our next step is to find out velocity, because once we have velocity, we know we can find position. So go ahead and put the video on pause. And this time, I want you to find velocity and then also find position as a function of time. When we come back, we'll compare notes. Welcome back. Hopefully you've ended up with a solution that looks very similar to this. You may have used your initial conditions to get a slightly different x naught constant here, but the result should be the same. That said, we'll be using this technique going forward, especially when it's important that you're able to perform the work that's a necessary part of what we're evaluating together. I like to play chess in my spare time, and one of my favorite teachers out there is Josh Waitzkin. And one of the things he says is that when you're studying chess, you only get out what you put in. So if I'm looking, if I'm studying my end game scenario and I'm doing it casually and not being very precise about understanding and comprehending what's happening in front of me, then I'm losing out on the learning opportunity and my chess game's going to suffer. This is also true, obviously, in any technical pursuit. So you have a choice of either being a lazy learner and not engaging with the video format in front of you, or actively engaging and practicing and, and sinking your teeth in the material, into the material in front of you. At the end of the course, your engineering comprehension, your capability, and your mastery are going to be a direct reflection of which path you chose to take. Now before moving on, let's take a look at this equation and make sure it makes sense. This is always a, a fun part of the problem for me. First, when um, the time is zero, do we have x naught? Well, let's make, the, if the time is zero, this is going to be a 1. This whole term will be a 1. This whole thing's going to go to 0, and we have x naught. We also notice that this term right here is going to start off at 1, and then it's going to decrease and go down to 0. It's an exponential decay. That means that, interestingly, you're going to have a 1 minus a 0 term here, and you're going to have this term standing by itself plus x naught equals x of t. There's going to be no time influence there, which means it's going to hit some sort of limit, some sort of wall. It's always a, a neat idea. It's going to be approaching some final term. And as we expect, there's never a time when this position is going to become negative. Because remember, that applied force varied with velocity, so that when that velocity got lower and lower, moving to the right, the applied force would decrease as well. Now let's take another look at this equation and we're going to try a different applied force. And let's make this in red. And the force will vary with time. It's going to be a function of time. It's going to be f, some constant, some magnitude, times sine omega t. Let's try and set this problem up together. Solve for position as a function of time. Go ahead and put the video on pause. And we, when we come back, we'll compare notes. Welcome back. Hopefully you ended up with something that looks very close to this. And once again, your constants may look a little bit different based on 
how you chose to evaluate the integrals, but the end result should be the same. Well, let's look at what happened. I started off with my first step of creating a, um, a differential equation that made sense. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not that one. It's, well, I guess, yeah, we can use that. A differential equation that makes sense. Next, next thing I did is I started to evaluate it as best I could, basically separating the variables and evaluating so that I could find velocity, which is right here, found velocity right there, and then I use my velocity to find position. Now let's give some texture to this problem, see if the results make sense. We have some velocity as a function of time. If the force is really, really small, this term right here will all go to zero, so we ha we're hardly applying any force, and the final velocity is equal to the original velocity. Or we can imagine that if we were to have a really light force and we were to shake it, or we, and we were to shake it really, really, really fast, uh, much faster than the mass could really absorb and start to move in response, that it's not going to change the overall velocity that significantly. And in fact, we see that. Here we have a omega term, which indicates how fast that force is oscillating. If we make it really high, so you're shaking it fast, the cart will continue on with some vibration. In the other direction, we can imagine that if we apply a strong force and it's very, very slow, slow enough that the cart has time to respond to it and move with it. If we were to do that, you can see that this term right here starts to influence and dominate the final velocity, the velocity as a function of time. And we can make all the same assumptions or the same perceptions when we look at position as a function of time. I hope this quick evaluation of these two forces gives you a little better feel of how to evaluate these types of problems going forward. In summary, we, follow, we followed our three steps of identifying the differential equation, isolating the variables, and using the initial conditions. One final note, and that's that many of you may have had problems going through all of this math, solving for the final position as a function of time. I want you to see this as a skill in development. Don't sweat it too much. However, one thing that's really important is being able to bring yourself to this step right here. The first step of setting up the differential equation is absolutely vital. We say this when we get to this point, we've reduced to quadrature, and it is the backbone, the essence of dynamics. Not all the math, but setting up your differential equations accurately in a way that reflects the problem in front of you. Thank you for joining me, and in our next video module, we're going to look at some of the more commonly used varying forces in a deeper way, hoping it'll give us a better feel intuitively and fundamentally of what's happening. I look forward to seeing you then.